Hello, this is Reiki Master Angelia, um, and today I am in continuing with Works of Hearts, um, Reiki 2, and Natural Complementary Healing uh, Training Program. Um, last time we left off, we were talking about the labyrinth as a consciousness raising uh, device, and we're going to pick back up on that today. Um, so here we go. The labyrinth is a bridge to assist the masses moving from the old to the new energy. It is a time tunnel to objectively review past experience with the intent to reorder and expand the present moment. The labyrinth serves as a guide rail leading you out of separation and fear into the center of the great mystery that lives in you, and that's your soul. It is a vortex within vortices and can be used to assist earthbound spirits ready to move on. And that's if you want to deal with that. A lot of people don't want to deal with that. I don't necessarily want to deal with that. Using the rainbow colors in relation to the labyrinth symbolizes the rainbow race or the warriors of the rainbow. And there's a group that I belong to that, you know, it's called that. Um, these are men and women who take responsibility for what isn't working in their lives. Having the courage to look inside to do battle with the parts of themselves that are in conflict or out of balance. And a lot of us have that, you know, there are problems, you know, we grew up in not good situations or we, you know, uh, get in not good situations and parts of us come out of balance and, you know, we need to learn to reintegrate ourselves and become whole. This battle is many times erroneously waged outside by projecting and fighting the inharmonious parts of oneself that are seen in others. You know, so that's, when you look at others and you are getting kind of hateful at them, usually it's because you see something in them that you don't like about yourself. Um, now, not always is that the case. Sometimes you see that their behavior is maladaptive and it's going to cause them problems and maybe it is causing them problems. Um, and so you, so you try to say, hey, you know, but they're not ready to learn. You you can't make a person learn, you know, that you can't, as I said in another thing the other day, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Toby Evans has a project called Peace Begins With Me, and it does, that acknowledges peace building is an inside task which we are each responsible to establish and to maintain. And if everyone did this, the world would be a much better place. This is a part of the Nonviolence Project. Arun and Sunanda Gandhi spearheaded this globally unified grassroots movement to commemorate the 50th and 30th memorial anniversaries of the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The 64 days between January 30th and April 4th have been established as the season for nonviolence. This time will be observed each year to create awareness of nonviolent principles and practices as a way to heal, transform, and empower our lives in an attempt to make our communities more peaceful. I think we would all like that. <laughs> Through your willingness to fully feel, you create an opening to transcend yourselves, melting the blocks in your heart with compassion, vulnerability, tenderness, unconditional love, and forgiveness. By joining with others who are also in this open state, a force field of healing energy emerges that is truly transformational. And there's a bunch of references his here. I'm not going to put you through that. So we're going to move on to the actual class part. <laughs> Energy medicine goes mainstream by Kuntz uh, Katie is where this is from. I'll give you that one. Um, techniques to balance your energy are among the most widely used disciplines in alternative medicine. Before taking your pick, here's what you need to know. When Elena Gillespie's dog, Yanis, was dying of lung cancer, 
she let a friend talk her into visiting an energy healer for advice. The healer told Gillespie, an emergency medical technician, to touch her dog the same way she touched her patients. Gillespie hadn't mentioned that, along with the medical procedure she administered, she would sometimes put her hands on a patient and project love and calming thoughts while they rode in the ambulance. But figuring that it couldn't hurt to follow the healer's advice, that afternoon she tried the same techniques on the Tibetan Mastiff's chest for about 15 minutes. Then she left for work. Yeah, excuse me here, I got a little thing going on here with my lips. <laughs> when I came home, the dog who couldn't even get off the floor earlier in the day was standing at the door, waiting for me, she says. I took him out and ran him around. I was stunned. When the vet took an x-ray of the dog's chest two days later, the tumor was gone. While it could have disappeared on its own, Gillespie believes Yanis recovered as a result of her healing touch. Gillespie's hands-on application and treatment is an example of energy medicine, which is one of the most widespread alternative medicine disciplines. According to Wayne B. Jonas, MD, former director of the National Institutes of Health's Office of Alternative Medicine, now the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. So, see, this is a real thing. <laughs> Therapeutic touch and acupuncture are the most popular therapies. But others, such as homeopathy and Reiki therapy, are making inroads into the mainstream via complementary or integrative therapy centers at medical schools, hospitals, and clinics throughout the country. Once relegated to the realm of shamans and mystics, energy medicine has been deemed a form of frontier medicine by the NCCAM which defines this specialty as complementary and alternative medicine practice for which there is no plausible biomedical explanation. In the fall of 2002, the agency awarded the Uni uh, University of Arizona in Tucson and the University of Connecticut Health Center in Farmington $1.8 each to establish Frontier Medicine Research Centers. Today, thanks in part to a relatively recent increase in research funding, scientists are studying how energy medicine might work on a wide range of medical problems, not only on the chronic conditions, such as back pain or headaches, that prompt most people to consider it. For instance, a report this year in the Annals of Internal Medicine noted that homeopathic remedies appear to be effective in treating influenza, an acute ailment, and researchers are investigating how therapeutic touch might boost bone metabolism, and whether a Japanese energy healing technique known as Jori can speed recovery after surgery. And um, that's why I got into um, Reiki and uh, alternative medicine was because I found out I had osteosclerosis with myelofibrosis. Um, and the medical treatments for that are pretty much nil. Um, and the ones that they do have um, only work in a small percentage, like 2% of cases. And they can be very detrimental to you, um, such as, you know, um, radiation, which doesn't work, you know, uh, except for, you know, 2 to 12% of the time. So that's why I got into this. And it has definitely helped me. I, I swear by it. <laughs> An old slash new paradigm. Many techniques used to manipulate energy in the body have their foundation in ancient healing arts and stem from the Eastern belief that all humans have a life force energy. And of course we do. Of course we do. We're soul in a body and we have electricity running through us. This energy is called Qi or Qi by the Chinese Ki by the Japanese, and Prana by Hindus. In these traditions, disease occurs when energy is out of balance, and healing is enhanced when that imbalance is corrected. Excuse me. 
The idea of using energy to diagnose and heal isn't completely foreign to Western medicine. After all, electrocardiograms and electroencephalograms have long been used to record the electrical energy of the heart and brain. So think about that. That just proves that it is there and it's going on. You know, people want to call it, uh, but, you know, because very new agey people have been using this, people like to dismiss it. But the evidence is there that you have these electrical fields in your brain, in your heart, um, and that they can be, you know, manipulated and helped. Respectively, electrical stimulation is known to suppress certain types of pain. Pulsed electromagnetic fields appear to help fractured bones heal. Again, one of the reasons I got into this. And sound waves have been used to pulverize kidney stones. My dad had that done. And overgrowths of bone that cause heel spurs. While these diagnostic tools and treatments make use of energy, they do so in a way that still approaches the body according to the Western paradigm. That is... As a mechanical system. Frontier medicine, however, views the body as a unified system of energy addressing body, mind, and spirit holistically. And that just makes sense, doesn't it? We are energetic beings, states C. Norman Sheely, MD, PhD, founder of the American Holistic Medical Association. Everything in the body works both electrically and chemically. We're like a living battery. And since electricity produces magnetism, the force that attracts and repels molecules, we are electromagnetic as well as electrochemical. Proof of a human energy field may be at hand, literally, thanks to a machine invented in 1999 by Russian physicist Konstantin Korotkov. The gas discharge visualization device passes a low-level electrical current through the fingers and photographs the electromagnetic radiation coming from them. A computer then analyzes the picture and extrapolates information about the entire body. Initial testing found that the machine could distinguish real acupressure points from sham ones. If the GDV is found to be accurate, says Sheely, it will be a tremendous boon to the field of energy medicine. Looking for proof. Attempts to evaluate energy medicine in the past have been mediocre, says Jonas, now the director of the Samueli Institute, a nonprofit research organization specializing in the biology of healing. One big problem, the methods traditionally used to evaluate the effectiveness of a drug or operation have not been used by energy medicine researchers because they kind of, you know, like I said, a lot of people do this new wave thing and, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with my lip here. It's having problems. Um, and so a lot of, not a lot of research has been done. A goal of the Samueli Institute is to define accurate and universally acceptable standards, methods and protocols for objectively evaluating this form of medicine. In fact, because we need to incorporate more complex issues than are included in the study of conventional medicine, we need to develop even better methods for research, Jonas says. This will allow scientists to finally ascertain if energy fields exist and can be altered to enhance healing and to treat disease. Healing choices. If you are considering trying some form of energy medicine, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you are, <laughs> a good place to start is at University or Hospital-Based Center for Complementary Medicine. These centers typically offer the service of, of practitioners we have formal training and certification by a national membership organization. The organizations themselves are a source of referrals to practitioners too, says Jonas, though not all types of energy medicine are represented. 
Another useful resource is the Directory of Information, Resources Online, compiled by the National Library of Medicine. Going to an independent practitioner is riskier, especially in the form of therapy if they have no certification program. Um, and I'm sure you can see some of these certificates on my walls here. I completed, you know, uh, one through master's level. So, you know, I am qualified to teach you these things. Um, and I was qualified to have my practice that I closed um, recently. So, you know, you can trust what I'm saying. <laughs> Ask for references. And watch for red flags, such as a practitioner guaranteeing that he or she can cure a condition, because there's no guarantee. Um, we believe we certainly can help things and ease things, but ultimately, um, we know it's not up to us, you know, because there's someone above us where we get our power from, you know, to heal, um, and it's their choice. It's their choice. But we can do the best we can for you and then leave it all up to them. He also suggests having your primary care physician on board so that the energy medicine therapy you're interested in can support your conventional medical care. Um, and as like I said, it, it's a good thing to have both, you know, and enmesh them. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll get a feel for what is working for you and what is not working for you. Think of energy medicine as an adjunct to conventional treatment, and that's why I'd say complementary, not as its replacement, he adds. And some people do that. They decide this is all I'm going to do, and then they end up with medical problems that, you know, need medication and things um, because there are things that you can do to help and, you know, enlighten uh, pain and things like that. But ultimately, like I said, someone else is in charge. Um, and if you have to go through something serious um, to make you see something, then that's what's going to happen. But if you can get, you know, um, say if you're getting diabetes and you need the medication, certainly you're going to want to do that. Um, but you can also Reiki your pancreas every day and you will feel better and it will help. Um, you know, it just depends on the severity. Um, it depends on God's will, honestly, you know, so... You know, um, I, I just exercise caution in everything, and that's probably just me. <laughs> Elena Gillespie's experience with her dog prompted her to incorporate energy medicine into her conventional medical training as an EMT. She studied Reiki and eventually co-founded the Complementary and Alternative Medical Research Center at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. One of roughly 16 research centers that are funded in part by the government to investigate alternative healing methods. So see, once she did that, that's how much she believed. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. When, when we do this, when we get into this, um, we almost always go all the way because that's how much we believe in this. Because once it works for you, you realize it can work for other people and, you know, it's just awesome. The disciplines described on these pages are some of the most common energy medicine practices used today. Some techniques are actually being practiced by conventionally trained physicians, while some are practiced in alternative practitioners, but in conventional medicine settings. Like, you know, um, I was talking about people, you know, doing the Reiki in the hospital. You come to the hospital and you do the Reiki on the patients, you know, if, if they're okay with that, you should always ask. Um, and so, you know. Uh, that's something you can do. And some are just beginning to be studied. Until research methods are established and the appropriate studies conducted and published, a process that may take a decade or more, there is no way to prove that energy medicine works. But it does. Um, so far, acupuncture has been the most widely examined form of energy medicine. And the results have been persuasive, though, that the NIH has called it highly effective for numerous conditions. Um, and I had the kind on my heel when I went to physical therapy where they put the needles in and they run the electricity through it. Um, and the guy, um, I don't know what his deal was. I don't know whether he was a bad therapist or he just was having a bad day or wasn't paying attention. Um, 
but he ran that through me and I mean my leg drawn up like a you know, frog leg in a hot pan and I screamed and he's like oh oh does that hurt I'm like well yeah you know why am I sitting here screaming if it didn't um and he's like oh well you know I didn't feel like you were giving me good feedback but then he turns and looks at the guy behind him and says huh I had it set to 10 yeah so <laughs> even if you go into a physical therapy setting um or a chiropractic setting and actually um, I was told years ago by my primary care physician not to go to physical therapy or to a chiropractor because I have the osteosclerosis. Um, and they said, she said, they will break your bones. They are going to hurt you if you go. Um, she said, because I know, she said, I'm a little woman and I've gone to therapy and these big people have hurt me. And she's I'm like, why would you do that? And they're like, I don't know. I do that normally with everybody. She said, but, you know, a lot of these people are bigger people that get into physical therapy. And if you're a little person, they're going to end up hurting you, especially if you have bone disease. Um, and so that happens. So even with professionals, you have to look out for yourself. You have to advocate for yourself. If anybody's doing something, you need to stand up and say, hey, you know, um, but it's harder if you're on medication to where you're dulling your pain um, and, you know, you feel like, ow. And then, you know, suddenly an hour or two later, you're black and blue from here to there and swollen up. And you realize, you know, there probably should have been more than an ow, but you're on pain medication. So there wasn't. <laughs> so look out for yourselves. Advocate for yourselves. Excuse me. Meanwhile, many of the therapies continue to grow in support and popularity as we explore this new frontier. Light therapy. What is it? A range of light, such as full spectrum or colored light, or colored strobe light, it is used to induce relaxation or treat physical complaints. Exposure to full spectrum light for an hour each day has been shown to be effective in relieving the depression of seasonal affective disorder. Now, that I know that's true. My fiance has that. Um, and winter just hits him hard. By stimulating the body's release of mood-altering hormones. Quickly pulsating strobe lights are known to cause seizures. Light therapists believe that they can coax the brain into a state of deep relaxation. Says Norman Sheely, MD again. Professor of Spiritual Healing at Holos University in Fairgrove, Missouri. State of the art in science. Research at the Sheely Wellness Center in Springfield, Missouri, indicates that green and violet lights cause the release of the hormones oxytocin and prolactin, which, among other functions, increases feelings of well being and pain relieving endorphins. Researchers in Sheely's lab have also shown <clears throat> that exposure to a pulsating light improves depression and helps normalize the slightly irregular heartbeat that can occur in times of stress. Biofield therapy. What is it? There are various techniques that aim to promote healing by influencing the energy that surrounds and penetrates the body. One is the ancient Chinese art of Qigong, or, you know, Qigong, which combines movement Meditation and regulated breathing. Another is Reiki, a Japanese technique that aims to alter the energy pathways of the body. Reiki practitioners claim to accomplish this as they draw sacred symbols with their hands in their energy field just above their subjects' bodies. I mean, that's if you use those symbols. Not everyone uses those symbols. Someone uses our own symbols. You know, it's all, you know, in what you believe. In medical centers, therapeutic touch, a variation of the ancient healing method known as laying on of hands, is becoming more widely used. It involves lightly touching or holding the hands above the body in order to manipulate the energy field. State of the art and science. Therapeutic touch has been shown to enhance the health of premature babies and studies are underway to confirm that it reduces the stress placed on their immature bodies. 
The technique, which was developed by a nurse in the 1970s, is taught to health professionals at 80 universities throughout the country. Today, some 30,000 nurses use its methods for enhancing healing in children and adults. A meta-analysis published in Alternative Therapies in Health and Medicine showed a positive effect in most of the 38 studies reviewed. While a meta-analysis of therapeutic touch research in Nursing Science Quarterly reported that the therapy produced a positive effect. Several current studies founded by NCCAM intend to evaluate whether Reiki improves fibromyalgia. My sister-in-law has that. The anxiety and depression experienced by those suffering from advanced AIDS and diabetic neuropathy, the painful condition involving the nerves of the feet. Researchers are also measuring the ability of Qigong uh, masters to alter the growth of cell cultures. This experiment is designed to eliminate the possibility of the placebo effect, which was proved to be an obstacle to research in human clinical studies. Acupuncture and acupressure. What it is. Hair thin needles are inserted at specific points, gateways or acupoints, along a network of energy channels or meridians in the body that corresponds to specific organs or organ systems. According to Eastern medicine, Energy is a life-activating force that moves through the entire body. When acupuncture needles are placed at several of the 2,000 points along the meridians, the flow of constantly circulating energy is activated or inhibited, restoring equilibrium. Acupressure, in which firm finger pressure is applied to these acupoints, has a similar effect. Investigations have shown that acupuncture causes the release of endorphins, which are natural painkillers and other chemical messengers. State-of-the-art in science. Acupuncture is now a licensed medical profession in more than 40 states. The World Health Organization has long recognized acupuncture's ability to treat nearly four dozen common ailments including arthritis, migraine, low back pain, allergies, respiratory ailments, and gastrointestinal disorders. The National Institute of Health has found acupuncture useful in treating nearly a dozen conditions, including headache, low back pain, fibromyalgia, tennis elbow, asthma, menstrual cramps, and some inflammatory conditions. A review published earlier this year in the British Medical Journal reported that evidence is strongest for acupuncture success in treating dental pain and temporomandibular joint pain, say that three times fast, and promising for relieving headaches, fibromyalgia, and osteoarthritis. Yeah, that's me. Research on chronic back pain, also me, stated the BMJ is less conclusive. Currently, NCCAM is funding 19 studies on acupuncture and acupressure. Magnetic healing. What is it? Magnets are placed on or near the body to reduce pain and swelling and speed healing. Practitioners say that the magnetic field created by the magnets increases circulation, improving oxygen supply and waste removal from the cells in the area. Additionally, the magnetic field is supposed to inhibit nerve signals carrying pain messages to the brain. My mom had problems with her heels and she used to wear those little magnets on hers and she said they helped. Um, well, that is all for now. I think you heard our bell. Um, and I hope you found this educational and informational. Um, and if you'd like to help me to continue um, to teach this um, here, then I'll leave the link uh, for the GoFundMe in the description. And you can certainly help me to do that. Um, 
And uh, that's all for now. Until next time.